Honestly, I bet you haven't seen this deck profile in some time, and I wouldn't blame you. This deck is very much under the radar in today's format, and the deck of ports that I'm talking about is Altergeist. I played this deck on the peak of its powers, and honestly, in today's format, if you build it a certain way, you can still be competitive with this deck. Now, I think I've put together a really powerful deck list for Altergeist in the December 2023 format, and I want to show you guys right away. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already for more deck profiles. We're uploading every single day in the month of December, so if you guys want to stay tuned into all that you guys gotta subscribe all right with that being said though let's get right into the deck profile so just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say that I played Altergeist when it was at the peak of its powers, and boy do I miss this deck. I think this deck is such a fun deck to play, and I haven't played it in a while, so what I decided to do was go online, check out some deck profiles, test the deck out for myself, and I think I've put together a build that's actually really powerful in today's format, and you can actually play this and have a good time playing it, right? So let's get into the profile here. Of course, we're going to be starting off with three Altergeist Multifaker, the most important card in your deck, honestly. It gets everything rolling for you, which is really powerful. Of course, at the end of the day, the impact per multi-figure combo is still one of the best two card combos in the game you can use it going turn zero what i mean by that is even if you're going second you can activate imperm then you can activate faker and get your ball rolling on turn zero before you've even drawn a card which is absolutely insane right so three multi-figure is a must three milliseek as well as three marionetter now marionetter and milliseek are both your normal summons of the deck so you're technically playing six normal summons three and three but they do different things so milliseek of course when it's sent to the graveyard can search you an altergeist monster and that's really powerful because you can use it to link away into cards like anima going second but then of course you have cards like all mirage and link karibo as well that you can use and then you get the search effect off it also has a battle phase effect which is really nice it doesn't come up as often as it used to where you used to attack directly and send a card your opponent controls however it's still a very powerful effect when it does come up and then three marionetta of course being able to set any altergeist trap directly from your deck is really powerful as well so three marionetta three milliseek these are the three ofs in the deck and then funny enough we're only playing one ofs of some of the other names so we used to always play two silk Odis, but i decided that one silk Odis is actually just enough with how fast today's format is going you only need the one because you really want to be able to push for game in your turns three and turns four you don't want to play super super mid-range or super super grindy anymore with this deck you really want to be able to kind of set up a board set up some disruptions and then be able to push for a lot of damage right so the one silkwoodis the one pukri as well as the one new mall wisp mall wisp is a really powerful card as well and the really cool thing about this card is that it's a tuner so it gives you access to another combo that this deck never used to have but with this card it actually gives it access to that little like you guys are going to see with this combo I'm, I'm going to show you guys and kind of explain how the combo works but uh, mall wisp is really powerful and it's another name for you which is really nice and then of course we're playing three personal spoofing one of the most important cards in the deck to be playing one protocol one manifestation one of the new revitalization as well as the one haunted rock so if anyone doesn't know haunted rock has a really powerful effect where you set it off marionetter and then you're able to activate it then you can use the pukri and then just a lot of really cool things happen with the haunted rock so i really like playing the haunted rock because then it also gets your multi fake alive as well which is really nice so i really do like playing this this is pretty much like a monster reborn for you which is really powerful because it kind of helps you like i said earlier Put more monsters on the board so that you're able to otk and push for more damage right so revitalization as well as one haunted rock then for hand traps we're playing three ash of course three dd crow which i think is one of the best hand traps in today's format being able to stop decks like unchained tier limit even against centurion it's pretty good against purely it's pretty good as well so dd crow i think is really powerful so i like playing three dd crow and then of course three infinite impermanence the most important card in this deck this might as well be an altergeist card how powerful it is in this deck so of course you're playing three imperm and i'm actually deciding to play two talents as well i think triple tactics talent is really powerful in today's format being able to draw extra cards if you need to being able to break your opponent's board being able to get rid of a card out of their hand it's so powerful going first and going second so i decided to play the talent in the main deck i think it's really powerful in the main deck this could also be any other hand trap but i think talents is just a little bit more powerful and then we're playing three prosperity as well as one called by the grave prosperity of course to get you deeper into your deck is really powerful and then called by the grave doesn't need much explanation i'm playing three solemn strike solemn strike is one of the best trap cards that this deck can play one of course because it triggers your faker but two because it's a really powerful card going first and going second it helps you break boards if you do set it going second but if you do set it going first then you're able to stop your opponent from making a board right so it's three solemn strike and then three evenly mash i actually opted to play evenly mash in the main deck because i felt like this deck going first had never had any problems doing anything going second is where it kind of struggled and i think evenly match in today's format against rescue ace and honestly against any back row decks like labyrinth and just decks in general i think evenly match is pretty powerful you don't care about your battle phase in your first turn because you're not going to be otking right away but if you're able to evenly match and then kind of set up a simplified game state that's when this deck really shines because when you're in a simplified game state this deck can snowball and that's what you need to do with this deck right so i decided to play three evenly match 
match. I think it's really, really powerful in this deck. So you guys can see 40 cards in the main deck. And then I do kind of want to explain a little bit of a combo here. So Maul Wisp with Multi Faker. If you're able to get these two on the board, and let's say you have something like a Hextia already on board, right? So if you have a Hextia with Maul Wisp and Multi Faker, you're able to make a level six Synchro. And the level six Synchro you want to make is your Drag Virion. And essentially what ends up happening is that this card, if it's tributed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon it, right? So it kind of helps itself kind of to get back to the field. And the most powerful thing about this card is if you have it pointing to a Hextia, you can use a Hextia, tribute the Drag Virion, and then you're gonna be able to negate a spell with this. And then this is gonna be able to summon itself back to the zone that Hextia points to. And if you guys don't know, Hextia negate effect is not a hard ones per turn. It's actually not a once per turn at all. The other effect where if it's sent to the field and you get to search a card, that's once per turn, but they can negate is not. So for that reason, this card is really powerful with the Hextia. And that's kind of why the Maul Wisp is so powerful in this deck right now, right? Because it's going to be able to set you up with multiple negates, which is really nice. But now moving on to the extra deck, of course, we are playing three Hextia, the most important card in the extra deck to be playing. One Prime Banshee. I actually really like this card. It doesn't come up super often, but when it does, it's really powerful. As well as the one new Adminia. I think I'm saying that right. Altergeist Adminia. This card is pretty powerful as well. And then we're playing the one Link Karibo. One Link Karibo. This is mostly for if you get Ibli locked by any chance by your opponent and all rest Rescue Ace can sometimes play Ibli and you don't want to get Ibli locked, right? And then if you're not playing against Rescue Ace or you're going first, you can always use it as Prosperity Fodder as well, right? So it's just a slot that is really helpful when it does come up. And then we're playing the one All Mirage, the one Anima helps you going second as well. IP Mascarina, SP Little Knight. These are all kind of staple cards that you guys should be playing in a lot of extra decks. Unicorn as well is really powerful. I like playing the Selene. Selene is really powerful because it's a spellcaster that can kind of monster reborn and helps you get access to something like Axis Code Talker, which is really nice because this is another OTK button for you. So that's why we're playing the access code and lastly the drag virion with the hextia combo is really really important so of course we're playing one of those so that's it for the extra deck let's move on to the side deck now but keep in mind side deck is always going to be up to personal preference if you guys go to a locals that has a lot of back row players then you're going to be playing a lot of back row hate if you go to a locals with a lot of combo players then you're going to want to be playing a lot of combo hate right this is kind of a side deck that's kind of built to beat a little bit of everything and it's just going to be used as a skeleton for you guys but of course feel free to mix and match based off what your locals is and based off of what your preferences are okay so to get started here we are playing three Joel and Lockbird. Joel and Lockbird I think is really powerful against certain decks where this kind of just shuts them down. So Joel and Lock I think you have to be playing because you can swap it out for decks that DD Crow isn't great into. You can play Joel and Lockbird. Then we're playing three Thrust as well as one Herald, one Lightning Storm, and one Harpy's Feather Duster. This is really powerful for when you're going first but also when you're going second and let me tell you guys why. So when you're going second of course you can side in these board breakers and help you break boards but if you're siding to go first and sometimes you don't think you need the hand traps anymore what you can do is you can side Thrust in and side in cards like D Barrier and then what ends up happening is your thrust can now search imperm, technically can search prosp, can search talent, can search D barrier. So it becomes really powerful in that sense. So that's why I really like this card. It's good going first and going second. Of course, with they're playing three D barrier as well. D barrier, I think in this format specifically is so powerful. It's such a shutout against so many different decks. And so that's why I'm playing three D barrier. Now you guys might argue, why are you playing three, not one? Because you can just thrust into it. In a deck like this one, I kind of want to see the trap more than I want to see the thrust. The thrust is more of a consistency piece. I'd rather see the trap because if I see barrier plus a faker, then I know I'm guaranteed to get the faker off. Whereas if I see something like thrust and faker, I'm kind of hoping that my opponent has something for my thrust to be live. Does that make sense? So I think three barrier is really, really important. And then three solemn judgment, of course, because I know my opponent is going to be siding in lightning storm, harpies and all that kind of stuff. Solemn judgment just protects you with that, right? So that's why I think three solemn judgment. But again, Use this as a skeleton. You guys can switch it up depending on what your preferences are. But that's it for the deck over here, guys. I think this deck low-key is very saucy in today's format. It's something that I don't think a lot of people are going to expect. And when people don't expect a deck and are not prepared for it, I think that's when the deck shines the most. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Altergeist for the 2023 December format. I think this deck can still be very competitive. Yes, it's a rogue deck. Yes, it's a deck that people won't expect, but honestly, you can take that to your advantage. Use the fact that your opponent is not expecting the deck, snowball with the deck, and you can win a lot of games. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy today's video. We are uploading every single day in the month of December. So if you guys are subscribed, you guys will see all the videos. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button. Just boom, just click it. Cool, you clicked it, nice. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out, peace.